Like I was just around the wrong people. I was like, my energy was just, just still kind of don't give a shit. And like, it took for me to nearly lose my life to understand that how valuable it is that I need to sort my life out. And then from that, from like being rock bottom, not even having like being kicked out, like we've just got our, our first our first baby and we've been evicted from renting. Do you know what I'm saying? United yeah. is living in London. Like. <laughs> How we doing? We here, man. No, I appreciate you coming on. I mean, I've been watching your shit for a, for a, for a long, long time. Fuck long, you know, that's crazy. And obviously, from Birmingham. Yeah, man. Where about in Birmingham were you from? Oh, where did we start? Started in Newtown, Handsworth, went to Quinton, from Quinton to Halsorin, from Halsorin to Albury, from Albury to London. Oh shit, you lived in all those different places? All of them places. Why what, what was, was you moving around so much? It's crazy, like, I don't know. It's parents, isn't it? You're right. Started off in the gutter, basically, yeah, yeah, <laughs> and then yeah. just like tried to get better as well as as they got along, and then yeah, migrated from Birmingham to London, twenty twelve. What was what was family like like for you growing up? Oh, they were proper supportive, but very academic, and obviously I'm not academic at all in any type of way. So it's like for them, it was like okay, this is the best school, so we need to move next to the best schools. Yeah. So we did that, but then I'd still be. The bad, the bad egg in the school, and it. So why was that though? Because you, obviously you're you're a smart guy. I don't know. I just you know what it was. It's, I think it's just like I've always had ADHD, so I've just been scatter scatter brain twenty four seven. Like if I love something, I love it, and I'm gonna do it one hundred and fifty thousand percent. But something that doesn't interest me, I'm just looking at everything else and just trying to do everything but the task in hand. So it's just like it's only over the time now where I've just kind of learned to just do what I love and then stick to that and then excel in it. Do you think it was, do you think it was, do you think school was the type of things you were learning at the time or was it the people you were, you were around? I don't know because it's just like, if the way I look at it now, because obviously I've got kids now, like learning now is way more cooler than learning back then. Yeah. Open this book and study this. I'm looking at it like, what the hell is this? Like, what, like, it's not giving me the buzz that I want to, oh, this is interesting. Whereas the stuff that actually was in the book actually was interesting, but it was just not, given to me in the right format for me to actually take in into my head. If you could make any changes right now to like the type of school systems, would you, what, what, what would you say? What, what type of changes would you make? It's hard though, because like, I the thing, the change that I would make is only due to the technology changing, times changing, things being acceptable. Whereas back then there was nothing that's actually, there's nothing that could actually be done because that's all that there was at the time. I don't think anyone knew any, any different. So it's like only over time, like you've got all of these, the social media, there's more on the internet and stuff like that. Like we had Acorn computers, I don't know if you know about it. It's like <laughs> you go on there and, and there was no internet. It was yeah. just like a few like freaking 16 <laughs> bit like games or some interactive or something like that. Like, whereas now you can just Google, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or you can YouTube something, you don't have to do something. You can YouTube and see, I'm one of them people that once I see it moving, how it, how it works and operates, then, oh yeah, I can do that without even reading the manual. So like if that was in place back then, then it'd be kind of easier to do. But so when you were learning, like in terms of your business or anything, you know, your DJing that you, you, you initially got into, yeah. where did you learn those types, types oh, of things? God. Do you know what? The whole DJ thing, when it, that's, say, let's talk about the DJing. When I first started DJing, my friends that are actually, there was a whole scene, don't know, I remember, like, I've been bro, like, baseline was a mad thing. Yeah, like, Dabrowski went off. The yeah, all going. of this was just cracking off and then, I used to be the man that used to drive all of these DJs to their shows. And I was just like, what? So you're like, I'm driving you to the show. You go to the show, you do one hour set and you get 250 quid. And I was thinking I was sitting there being Domino's pizza delivery boy. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Getting a pound a drop. Do you know what I'm saying? So after that, I was like, and I've always been into music. I've always been in bands and school and whatnot. I always like had played keyboards and stuff like that. Then I was just like, yeah, okay. Let me just, at the time I was working at PC World just as a sales advisor. And there was a little controller just sitting there like that. And obviously I got into gist with how it works and just studied it. And then in time, I was like, yeah, this is what I want to do. And then just went and did it. Literally stopped everything I was doing and just said, I'm going to become a DJ now. Let's just do it. But then I just started. So you, you, know, you say you're going to become a DJ. Then what? Do, what's the route? What do you so do? So first, first things first, I saved enough money to buy the decks. Right. Bought the decks, studied the decks, how they work. So I kind of taught myself. Obviously at the time, this is when like YouTube was there. So you, so you know what's going on. I was mates with the good DJs at the time, like you got like TRC, you got all these people and whatnot. It was, and I was like, yeah, you basically just do like this. Then I started to work in a DJ store. So I just, I'm just getting as much knowledge from every angle. I'm 
nine to five job is in hard to find records it was like the biggest dj store in the uk and all this equipment's there so i'm forced to learn how this works once i learned how it worked and then it was just like then networking okay cool i need to find a promoter yeah i can dj give me a free set let me try and do whatever it is and then you kind of like learn on the job and then it's like you realize okay i know how to dj but then i need to figure out what tunes am i playing in the right time mm. so it's like a whole finesse in terms of what what you need to learn to then make you the best out of the rest do you know what i'm saying just what 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 does separate a good dj is it the tunes you're dropping at the right time for the right you know what i mean it's crazy though is, there a sto- is it like a storyline through the night and you have to build up and drop yeah it's that but then again like things have changed now so like back when i started that was it it's like who's keeping the crowd in the longest who's got the best skills can you scratch can you do this can you do that that was at the time when I first started DJ and that's why it was fun because like you'd want to be the best DJ technically and you'd want to be able to use the 12 tens, which is the old school stuff. You don't want to be just using a controller because you can buy a controller now and press sync and it just syncs it and you can just, your basic DJ is for you. But that's all cut now. It's all now how many followers you've got, how much, uh, like how many SoundCloud views, uh, plays you're getting, um, what's good again, how many people know you through social media. That's what it is now. So kind of when it got to like that, I kind of, stop doing it like i was just like ah oh, it's a bit boring now because the person around the corner like who's getting all of the best shows and stuff can't even dj like literally and i'm sitting here and i know i can dj because i've done my due, due diligence learning how to dj in the best way and no one really cares about the skill anymore it's more about what you bring into the table how many tickets are you selling so the whole game changed completely but then at the same time i say that but then when the game changed i still did it's like okay cool there's a thing called instagram this was like 2012 that's why I started my Instagram account from DJ stuff. And to be fair, it did well. I kind of blew it up to maybe like 20,000 followers or something like that. But I also had a passion for cars. So I started putting that on there. And then that was even wilder than, like, think about it in the club. How many times do you want to see a DJ in the club playing to people on Instagram? It's not really that no. interesting. But like, that was when I learned, like, okay, cool. Like, it's a bit of a sticky one. Like, I don't know where it's going. I mean, the, the, the scene's changing and obviously I then realised that there's a whole car, car culture that ex, that inspired me more than the music. But then again, I'd say that I became a DJ because I was too much into cars back in the day. I used to get in trouble with cars. Like I'd always be in and out of court. Literally, I've had thousands of points on my licence to the point where I'm surprised I haven't been in jail. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, because <laughs> driving whilst it's qualified, driving, I just, it's like a drug to me, like Petrohead stuff is, so... It's just like... Um, Why didn't you go to jail? Don't you? Because if you get banned a couple of times, then surely you would. You know, know what? I'll be straight. I, lo- I was lucky. No, one, big up Normac because his pops was a police officer. So he kind of grew... He was like a child of family friend. So anytime I did call court, I just called him, yo, come with me to court, please. <laughs> please explain to him that I don't mean no harm. Any, but like, I'm just a pe- I just need a place to let my steam out and that's it. I didn't used to do anything. I didn't used to do drugs, didn't drink, smoke, nothing. Just cars and stuff what was it about the car though was it going the naught to 60 as fast as you can or Don't driving worry. around the, you know hitting, hitting hitting a bend at 50 when you should be going around mm. it at 10 do you know what it's not even that i think i was more inter- i was more about the mechanical side like what can i do to it i've got my car but i want to make it faster than, right. do you know like if anyone can go buy a car but i couldn't afford the car so i'd get the most cheapest honda civic and then try and make it as fast as possible and it was like a buzz when it was faster. Then I'll go out to the races, go race people. You then beat people. Then it's just become a buzz, like a a, 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 um, a habit that you just, I just kept wanting to want to go more, want to go more. And then we started racing for money. I was earning money, going out race people, earning money, building my car, blowing it up, doing it again. So how'd you race? Like, where are you racing? Is it straight line now race? Now, nah, well, at the time, before we used to have S-Benz in Birmingham. So obviously we'd have point to point. Or we used to go down a long dual carriage race strip and just drag racing. So there's various types. Back then, it was a lot more intense in terms of what you can do. But like now, it's a bit, yeah, maybe straight line, this, that, the other. But even still, there's not really anywhere, anywhere you can really do it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, straight line racing is that like who's got the fastest car? That's yeah, kind that's of it. it. It's that's that's it. Yeah, yeah. Really, who can it? get off the line and then that's yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was. But back then, it was like the whole thing. Like that, like, I'd spend my whole. I'd go and work my day to day job. I'd go and do my PC world, and then the night I'd go and deliver my Domino's pizza with the money from that. I'd go and spend it on my car, 
then at the at the night after that, the weekend, and it's race time. <laughs> so it was like, oh, man, you must be the quickest delivery driver <laughs> now ever had. <laughs> I was the worst because then, then any time I could go out, that's when I'm testing my car. So my pizza would be coming out, and I'd be getting complaints like, yeah, the pizza was dead. There was cheese slide. <laughs> <laughs> All I the just, cheese was stuck to the roof. Every time, like, what was the driver doing and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did get sacked a few times with that. I can't lie. Yeah. But yeah, learn on the way. <laughs> Fuck me. Yeah, because I, I, I listened to the CEO cast, and I think you said on there you had like 46 points. Yeah, yeah, like it was it was bad. Like, But I think it was just because, do you know, it's the maddest thing is like I was getting points, but I just, when I was a kid, I just didn't give a shit. Like I'd get a okay, case, summons through the door from the police. Oh yeah, fuck that. Just throw it to the side, carry on driving mm. until it caught up with me and then mm. I'll get pulled over. Oh yeah, do you know you're banned? Boom, licked. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? And that would happen. I'm like, ah oh, shit, no, I'm banned. To the point where I was just like, yo, if I keep getting caught, like, and it was, to be fair, a couple of times I'd just drive off. Yeah. But then sometimes when I actually don't know that I've actually been banned, then I'll get stopped. Then you're automatically in the system. Yeah. To the point where I just said to myself, do you know what? I need to find a way out to do this. And I just moved out of the country and just did two seasons in Malia. And I was just like over there. I was like, well, my license is still valid over there. I'm only banned from this country. So I just took my shit over there. And I was DJing every single night, which is even better. Oh, what was that club called in Malia? What was the main one? Um, uh, there was like uh, Apollo. Apollo. That's it. That one. one. <laughs> I went to Apollo when I was like 16. Apollo, yeah, yeah, that was it. So I was used to literally Apollo and Safari. So like the Safari, they've, they've come together now, ain't it? But literally it was, that was, when I went over there, that was 2011, I did my first season. And I was like, yo, this is perfect. Like, I can ride as many bikes as possible. Yeah. I can't, I'm not going to get stopped. I'm DJing every single night, like, for the next 90 days or whatever, or however many days, 100, 100 days or whatever it is, literally. And in the daytime, what I'm doing is buying bikes. So I'm doing the same thing, but over there, legally. Yeah, mad. So I did that and I was like, okay, cool. Got to the point where I was on a three-year ban. So I said, okay, cool, ride it out. I knew like 2012, it was like October or something. So I was like, I'm, I'm going to come off my ban. I said, from then, I said to my mom and dad, I was like, yo, listen, back that time. And then my license comes back, I'm back and restart my life fresh. Right. I'm not even going to go back to Brom because I'm going to go straight to London. So, like, that's when I kind of got with my missus properly. She was in London. I was like, okay, that gives me a reason to move out of the area because, you know, you just get comfortable in yeah. your own zone and stuff. Like, the police all know who I am around there and stuff. I'm always like, everyone knows who I am anyway before. I've got followers and stuff, just been being a little rat on the streets and fucking, fucking around and stuff. But, um, yeah, man, and then just kind of just started fresh from there. Obviously, from the beginning as well. Yeah. So it was like I got my license back. I was thinking, what's the first way that I'm gonna get back on the road? So I went and took a CBT test same day, got a moped, and that's it. Started working in London, got a job in London, and just yeah, back on the DJ scene and just reset everything from there. So how much at the time were you? How much around this time were you making? At the time, it was all right at that time because when I come back to London, I was actually doing quite a lot of nights in the. I was doing about maybe. About eight hundred pounds to a grand a week. So what is it like a two hundred pound a night? Let's say yeah, two fifty something, something like that. Yeah, no, but I was doing a lot of nights. How 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 long's a set? Just like two to three hours. Right. So like I do like twelve till three or twelve till two, and right. then another DJ will come on. Instead, when I was in Brum, I'd be doing like ten till three. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, I was yeah. kind of thinking, oh, this is better because yeah. I'm doing less hours, more money. But then, like, obviously, it's more expensive here. Yeah. yeah, my dad used to break down the, the reality of it. So I'm like, yo, I'm getting more money. But it's like, okay, cool. So how much did it cost you to get there? So how much is your maintenance on your car? This, like, the other, you know, you sit there, it's, 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 it's like, ah, oh, so you basically made 200 pounds. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then I was just like, yeah, you're right. Then it went through the phase. Then obviously, this time, social media is growing. So the whole game's changing. So then after that, I was just like, okay, cool. What do I need to do next to... Uh, stay relevant but then earn more money as well so that's why i started getting into the managing thing i started i started working with a lot of credible artists like your gigs your retch free twos like your ruskies and stuff like that that whole rusky project i was there from the start and whatnot all of because he's younger than me so mm. like i was in the game before him so all i did is gave him my links and stuff and then obviously put him in all the clubs that i've dj'd in my time and then he's the next hottest thing and pushed his career to when um to it, he's doing things that no one's ever done before so like i remember even with the gym shop thing, yeah, when yeah. i went to his gym shop thing i remember we did deal for that and it was like no djs really done an expo thing you, you know you guys took the expo thing to a different level yeah, and then got him to make yeah and basically got like, him to make a mix for us didn't we yeah we did the mix of it and it, mm. that went off literally i remember i remember the whole thing and it's just like doing the new things that no one else has done yeah. so i kind of clocked that and just started to elaborate on it and in terms of everything that i did moving forward and still up until this day 
I kind of take that into it because as you know, like once someone's done it, that's it. It's a copy, isn't it? Yeah. So it's it's like it's it's best to be the first of. So and it's really hard to keep things like moving. Like even now, like I think COVID's completely destroyed him. Like I ain't seen nothing from him. Like if you come a massive high, then you just that's start, it. So it's just like that's that's and I think that's where we're like sometimes I'm I'm, I'm happy because my parents are like they talk a lot of sense into me. So like and it's funny because they speak the sense to me before it happens. So like when things go wrong, like I remember I got into a situation, I first started YouTube and what, and I had a massive case in 20, 2018, literally I was just clickbaiting. I used to be into riding quads and stuff like that and whatnot. And then I, one time I, one of my mates got um, locked up for a drive, drive while disqualified. Right. I went and got his bike out the police compound and stuff, blogged it <laughs> as like a joke, like, yeah, blah, fuck the police, blah, 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 this, that, but anyway, the police gave me a bike that they shouldn't have given me or whatever. But they fucked up, but they tried to make it out that I fucked up and finessed them. Oh, really? Yeah, so this was a serious thing that's happened. This was 2018. And then um, they used my YouTube video as evidence that, yeah, I knew what I was doing and I was finessing the police, but my video was like, it was just clickbait. I so they gave video. you someone else's quad that was... They gave, they gave me someone else's quad that was meant to be... They gave it me back because I got the emails and stuff. They gave it me back. I had the authorization to get them back. But... They shouldn't have actually given it back because there was an order for that bike to be crushed. Oh, okay. So they made a mistake, but obviously they tried to blame it on me. So anyway, I had a massive case, like two, 2018. And like that went on. So, and this hit out of nowhere because it was a joke. I didn't take it serious and whatnot. I hit out of nowhere, took my laptop, took my passport, couldn't do nothing for the whole year. I was thinking, whoa, summer, I'm about to get popping like this mm. summer. Like, so anyway, that happened. Then I had a mad accident. One of my mates crashed my car, literally scarred my head. Oh, and you were in the car at the same yeah, time? Yeah, I was in the passenger that's seat. What, oh, that's what yeah, the that's how that's got, I broke my femur. So then I'm now disabled. No, no, no okay, work. Not your femur? Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. no joke either. Not a joke. Like, and at the time, to be honest, I didn't feel it, but it was in Holy shock. Holy shit. But then like, I got out of the car and I fell out. I was like, what's going on? Like, <sighs> But like he slammed us up into the wall and stuff. It was so what crazy. was the recovery like for a female injury? Did it completely snap in half? Fully snapped in half. Holy like, shit. Literally just sna clean snap. Holy shit. And I didn't even know it happened. Like, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. And so it's still to this day, I think about it, it just creeps me. Yeah. But yeah, so it, it, uh, like, I, it took me to have a whole year going wrong to understand that I need to put things right. So like in that time, I was like, okay, cool. So I can't DJ. I can't earn no money. I can't pay my rent. I'm about to get evicted. What the fuck do I do now? So then at the time I was like, okay, I need to start doing something. So that's I opened up another, I opened up another business. So obviously, this business I don't really tell people about it anyway. Some people know, some people don't. And then that business was like a contingency plan. If if all went wrong, like for example, I knew I was innocent and whatnot, but I'm one of them. Got yeah, I'm gonna stand. I'm I'm <laughs> I'm not guilty for none of this. You like trying to sniff me? Yeah. So anyway, they sent me to the old Bailey, sitting next to Tommy Robinson and whatnot. It was serious. Like, it was a serious thing. I thinking, how the fuck am I here? Like, what the fuck's going on? Anyway, I stuck to my guns. I was like, you like finessing me. Like, there's no way. I'm, I'm fully not guilty. So I set this business up. It was rolling just in case because I was looking at prison time. So I set it up. That was there just in case. Just because I, I had my first kid then as well. This was like 2018, year before. Um, 2017, my my Olivia who's five years old now she's that's like this is crucial time to me and stuff so I thought I need to set something up set that up and then was that advice from your parents to set did you ask your parents for advice no they set just said that like look now do you know they've always been telling me like what if like they always used to use a footballer footballer's sick until he breaks his leg yeah. do you know what I'm saying like so I, I took that on board like I actually listened to him I was like okay cool I need to set up another business or a few businesses that are something different so I'm not just relying on the one income and then it was like, okay, so I set that up anyway. Come to the end of 2018, I started to heal up. I was walking. That case got thrown out completely. Didn't get one conviction or whatnot. And now I had this business and I had my DJ stuff. So 2019, I thought, fuck it. Okay, cool. Fuck the DJ enough. Let me get this business set. So the whole of 2019, every penny that I had, threw it into this business. And it was literally, I'd get £100 in, bam, put it back into the business. That is, I had no dough. And then two thousand by the end of 2019, I was like, okay, cool, I need to get back on the DJ circuit. So then I was like, with Mist, who's my boy, who I kind of met through um, doing music and whatnot. I was like, look, you're still doing shows. I don't want my name to die out, people to forget that I'm actually a DJ. Because like you said, a lot of people see my name and don't actually take in that I'm actually a professional DJ. Yeah, That's even though it says DMO it says DJ. DJ yeah, yeah, yeah. But but like, I, as I said to you, I didn't. I don't blame them because yeah. you go on my page, it's all cast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's cast stuff. 
So then literally uh, 2019 ended that I started getting back on the on the scene and then the 2020 bam corona so it's just like everything one stopped after the other. one after another but then the business that I started in 2018 during corona exceeded to a different level so I was like yo this is sick money was flowing in so during that time and then I think this is, I didn't even have a car like 2020 it started 2020 I didn't even have a car I just had my transit van and my quad bike and that was it I used to use them to commute to my work and whatnot and then 2020 literally I bought like my first like not first car but like first car since having money again and whatnot and then started okay cool my, not, now I need to I remember I've been doing YouTube like back years but not took it serious so I was like oh, I need to take it serious now hired a video guy which is obviously Cam who's now my manager basically and business partner we do everything together and whatnot and then throughout Corona just just did everything that possibly could be done because I had the financial support in from the business was doing well. And then just obviously them starting up multiple incomes as well. So then that's, as you know, like I never understood that literally without having multiple incomes, then you are not making money. Like literally you need to make sure there's money come from there, 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 there. So like if five incomes ain't paying you, those other ones are still, and that's when I learned the finesse of like, yo, this is what needs to, I understand it now. So, yeah, man, it's a crazy journey. <laughs> so how many, so obviously we'll get onto the, you got all those different businesses. What 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 do you think was the biggest, you know, wh- how did you get back on that horse and, and keep going after so many setbacks? I think that 2018 year taught me everything. Like I was just around the wrong people. I was like, my energy was just, just still kind of don't give a shit. And like, it took for me to nearly lose my life to understand that how valuable it is that I need to sort my life out. And then from that, from like being rock bottom, not even having like being kicked out, like we've just got our, our first our first baby and we've been evicted from renting. Do you know what I'm saying? You know how yeah. it is living in London. Like my rent in London at the time was like, I, I was always living on the edge from when I've always lived in London. Like I went, the first place we moved into, it was like 1600 pound a month. Bearing in mind, my, my place in Albury, so it was like five bills a month. Yeah, and was that full full house or was that like house share as well? No, that was just like a little ap- apartment, oh, like right. literally. So like, and then I've, obviously I've gone into another place and stuff, but I needed that to kind of give me the drive to know that, oh shit, rent's coming. I need to make money. So oh, like, right. gives me the go to kind of like, otherwise I'll just be lounging around and I need to be a go-getter. So like it took that 2018 year for me to, to go through literally being on a serious police uh, case, breaking my leg, like being in a serious car crash, not having no money, not even being able to work, even if I wanted to work because I had so many restrictions, like they took my passport off me and stuff like that. I couldn't even go to certain like weddings, like family weddings and stuff like that. It, it took all of that for me to realise that, yo, I need to sort my life out. Like literally, need to, I need to just reevaluate everything and do things properly instead of just being so scatty and just like I am still scatty today but like literally just take it proper take it serious and know that like it's so easy to have because even at the start of 2018 that was when that start of 2018 was the year that I said yo my shit's gonna blow up mm. and then all of that happened and it just went vice versa so yeah man it took that horrible year for me to realize what's going on and just like okay use this now okay cool that ain't gonna happen again yeah. I'm gonna make sure of that by doing the X, Y, and Z. And now, obviously, that's what I, that's what I love about this. I love getting people on that clearly haven't come back, come from backgrounds that have been from wealth, and do you know what I mean. Yeah. They, they've made something of themselves. Yeah. And I think it's really important just to let people know, like anyone can kind of do it. Like you that said, anyone, there's no fucking trick to it, is there? And that's that's the thing because I sit there and I think that I am like I'll sit there and you'll give me a, like what's two times three. I still sit there and grab my phone and work that out. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But yet, still, it's not even about working hard. It's about being smart in what you're doing. Like, there's a lot of people that I know that are so capable of doing something, but they just don't have the drive or they don't see the future. Like, I'm one of them people that you can't tell me that I'm failing because I'll make sure I ain't failing no matter what. I don't give a fuck what comes in front of me because I'm going to destroy it. Do you know what I'm saying? If that's the way to go left, right, up, down, left, right, I'm going to do it. Do you know what I'm saying? By all means. So, like, and I think that's what keeps me driven 24 seven. Like, I don't think that I'm doing anything special or spectacular. I feel like it's just the drive is always there, no matter what wall comes in front of me. It's that consistency, right? Consistency is key to anything, literally. Yeah. 
that um that's what I like. You you've got this I can mentality where it's just like I'm gonna do it. Like yeah, you know, by fig- all means. <laughs> f- 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 let's see what comes after that. Yeah, you know yeah, 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 where do you think you learned that? I don't know. It's weird because I don't know. I just think that I've in my life, because I've been so wrong in doing things, I've not I'm Mr. Don't give a shit. Like if a police letter lands on my door, my mum would be losing her head back in the day. I'll be sitting there, yeah, fuck it, who cares? And it like, yeah, we'll go court and bus case, whatever it is, yeah, same. But like, I think because I've I've done that, it's kind of, I'm not really fearing anything, I don't have no fear. Like, there's always a way around things and a way of sorting things out. It's a good thing and it's a bad thing. Yeah. But like, if you can kind of do it on the same, like, I don't, I've always had obstacles throughout my whole life, throughout, literally throughout, so... If I've been able to get this far, then what's 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 stopping the rest? Do you know what I'm saying? What is stopping the rest? Do you think you can teach it? The old can mentality, because really, it's a big thing that I see people struggle with more than anything. They they, they think about too many things that can go yeah, wrong before just even getting through is, the door. It is hard though because it's like sometimes, like when I try and teach it to people, it's like the people that I'm trying to teach it, like I can't teach it to them because it's. They can't accept it and it might be too intruding to them. Do you know, like somebody that's like, oh, I'm worried about going through that door. I'm like, what the fuck do you mean you're worried about going through the door? Oh, look, watch this. I'll keep the door down and they'll still be there shaking out. Do you know, like that's just like a, a little example. But I feel like if people see it actually done, like I don't really tell my story that much. But like if you knew it from the start, then you'd see it. And then you, it's just like you, you'd, you can tell, you can... You, you, you can see the proof is in the pod, you know, you can, it's there. Mm. Like, look, this has happened, but yet still, I'm here today. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, this has happened. You know, in business, every day I wake up, I shit myself. I look at my phone and say, oh shit, what's going on now? Do you know what I'm saying? There's always something that needs to be resolved. And literally, communication is like, things can be resolved no matter what. No matter what. Like, even if it's a worst case scenario, there's still ways to resolve things. And it's just like, my outlook of things is different like that. So I know that there's a way around of resolving that issue. Whereas some people just freak out in it. So, but it's, it's a tricky one. It's, I do say it can be taught, but I feel like people need to see it in the severe examples. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it, it's, it's, and people need to have at least like 20% belief at the beginning to then accept the rest. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what, that's what I do believe because I do try and say to you, yeah, don't worry. Don't worry, it's not a new problem. But whatever it is, we'll sort it out. And they're just sitting there thinking, this guy's just deluded. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Mm. Obviously, last last episode, we, we had Tommy Mallet on and he was literally saying the same thing. Like, how's anyone ever going to believe in your story if you don't believe it? Like, how can you make that's something happen saying. if you don't truly believe what you're trying to do? That's that's exactly what I'm saying. Like, if I say something, I'm going to do it. Like, my motto is less talk, more action. Yeah. Like, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm going to do it. And then afterwards, I'm going to say, I'm going to show it you. It's yeah. done. That's it. Well, let's get let's get onto the the car collection as well. Like, obviously, you got what I said before, like forty cars. I think I've got like forty vehicles, probably. That's in terms of like, diff, like even I've got a few vans, yeah, quads, bikes, cars, normal cars, two supercars. Like, yeah, I've got. I, I can't even keep count of like. I had to download the app the other day, bro. It's not a joke. I downloaded the app, and it's another guy called Vehicle Smart. This is not even a promo ad. This is like for anyone else. It's like me that needs organizing. My organization skills are terrible. So I know for me to be able to do what I need to do, I need to have a system in place. See, that's really good though. You understand your flaws and you you, you use apps and things to, to work I have around to, them. I have to have flaws. Like I sat there like last 2020, I brought so many cars I can't even think of. Like, and the cars that I'm buying, I'm buying them to do projects on them. So I'm doing the projects on them. And then literally... I forget that a year later, like, oh shit, you have to tax your car again. You have to get another MOT. And that's when I clocked, like, last year. Oh my God. Like, I've got all these vehicles. I've got thousands of log books just sitting there. Like, what's going on? Because, like, when you're putting number plates on them and stuff like that, you get another log book. Yeah. So I've still got the duplicates. Then I've got lots of stuff. So I found this app anyway. That I've got all, all of my cars on there and all the vehicles and stuff on there. And, like, even struggle because I can't keep them in certain places. Like, I literally, I've just moved house and, like, I've got to do a build on my house now. I've got to extend the garage and stuff. I like to keep my cars uh, indoor. And like, I keep some of my premises, my work premises, and as many as possible in different garages up and down the country. Really? Yeah, literally, because they're so, most of my builds. So you don't keep them in London? Because obviously London is expensive. Nah, they're really not. Most majority of them in London. But right. like, the, some of them are like, if I say, okay, my E63, that's in Wrench. 
my Honda Jazz that I built the other day. It's a funny little g- gimmick car. That's in uh, MK Performance in Essex. Um, my Perfs at home. Um, G Wagons at home. Like uh, my vans in the garage. Like another one's at Deutsche Tech. Like I keep uh, another one's at Jam Sport in Northampton. Another one's in Malia. Yeah, <laughs> and I've got two cards in there. So. <laughs> yeah, so they're, they're they're scattered all over, which is kind of like the good thing and the bad thing because you forget about them and stuff. Well, how do you decide which one you want to draw with if you've got that many cards? Do you know what it is? I bought them for content, really. So it's just like, nah, I wouldn't say for content. I bought them because you know, as a kid, you always wanted mm. something, and now I can afford to buy them. Then I just go and get them. But then it's like. Because they're all projects, like I've said, okay, cool, I get the pro- I get the car, like, yeah, I'm going to make it a thousand breaks. So to do that is literally basically impossible. So each and every one is like, it's a year's worth of build work on each of them. So like, once you're doing one, you get you get one done, then you get the other one done, and then you get the other one done. And it's just like every day, like part of my daily day is to chase how far my other cars are doing <laughs> and stuff. You got, G- you got GTR? Uh, yeah, I had, I've got a GTR actually, R34, so... I literally bought it. It had a basic blown up engine. It's another project right. and stuff. But I didn't really like the drive of it. I'm more of a Honda guy. It's right. like for a GTR, you think kind of supercar, but it's not supercar. It's still a bit clunky and mm. stuff like that. But they're stupid fast. They're a lot progressive, <laughs> aren't they? Like yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Stupid fast. But I love my Japs though. So it's just like I thought, it's another one I'm going to go into and stuff. Like I bought another uh, Nissan 350Z like two weeks ago. But that's because I want to kind of do like a whole drifting thing. I want to start doing other things that I've not really ventured into too tough and stuff like that. And then just kind of like, yeah, get into it. You're not the British too fast, too furious. Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, I do say that. I base my life off fast and furious the whole. <laughs> I'm into my Hondas because of the first one when I see them going underneath the, the truck. When I saw that, I was yeah. like, yeah, that's mad. Do you do those type of customs on it? Do you put like the neons on it? Nah, uh, do you know what? Neons are coming back, but I don't really go that far into it. It's more of just speed. Right. Just speed. What, what can I do to the engine? What can I, what turbo is going to put what on it? What about NOS? Just stick some NOS in. And I have got NOS for my Honda and potentially my E63 as well. So. I'm going to be installing that onto there and there, but it's all ready to go and stuff. But yeah, all of it. <laughs> now, do you physically install it yourself? Sometimes, like I do help out. I am lazy. Like back in the day, I used to be really hands-on. Like I'd call myself a mechanic, but right. now I just don't have the patience with obviously doing business as well at the same time. So I'll just outsource it to the so, relevant to, company. Oh, so you have, you have like local yeah, garages like different you work companies with? Yeah, like one specialist in the Hondas, one specialist in Mercedes, one specialist in uh, supercars right. and stuff. Like my Perth, like a twin turbo did that. That's, I saw the Americans doing it and stuff like that. And I was like, yeah, I want to get that. But like even when I got my first Lamborghini, I was like, yo, I still don't want it to be just standard. Yeah. I want it to be like to the moon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So when you, when you made your transition into a YouTuber, then what was that like? That's a totally different business model. And you obviously you talked about your consistency. You started to get that up. You got the guy that started filming you. So how did it all change for you then? I think it was, it was, I don't even know because I still don't call myself a YouTuber. Like, YouTube, I've always done YouTube as like, it's like a hobby. Like it's something that I've wanted to always do, but I can never do it full on because, and like most of my supporters hate me for it because they're like, oh yeah, you say you're back, but then two videos later and you're gone for like another two, three months. But then at the same time, like I'd hit some videos that just go mad viral. And then it like at the time, I remember getting my first 10,000 subscribers and it was a stretch. And then after that, it just, it just goes like it just, it hits and it just goes into its own world and whatnot. But I don't know. I feel I feel like the transition from that was I don't know. I can't even I can't even see it because I've never ever took it so serious. It's just like we we'll do a video and then like we might have two weeks of solid doing three videos a week and then four months off. Like I'll be then summer touring or whatever, and then forget about it. And then same again and stuff. So, but like I did want it to always get into it, so it's a consistent thing but that was the key to it whenever i was consistent it was blowing up but then afterwards it just it just died back down do you think anyone can be a youtuber anybody can be a youtuber anybody but the thing is is that most people think i'm going to be a youtuber i'm going to copy what lewis has done but that's not that's not necessarily going to work for you because that's already been done so for me it's like my youtube channel is okay i'd say car reviews but i'm a bit more scattier and a bit more I don't even know what's going on, but it's just hype and energy. Like, 
that's what separates mine from anything else. Like if, if you see the way I drive a car compared to someone else driving a car, like it's wild. People are just thinking what the fuck's going on. Do you know what I'm saying? But if I'm in my element in my time. I'm still, I'll go back to my 16 year old <laughs> self and, and whatnot. But that's my thing and stuff. And then just trying to just do things that are not, not possible is kind of like what I try and do. But there's a lot of people doing the same similar thing, but like, just doing stuff that's like you actually enjoy doing instead of doing like okay cool if you get a supercar don't just start doing supercars because everyone else is doing that because that necessarily that's that's now tired everyone's done that so you now need to go on to the next thing so but it is possible to do youtube youtube gives is the platform to for you to do things that other people haven't done so you should make sure you're thinking about things that people haven't done and as long as the concept's right and you stay with it and your uncle. Do you know what I love? I love watching these guys on YouTube. They're called uh, the Diesel Brothers. You yeah. ever watched them? No, I haven't. And, and um, they they do a lot of um, like if a car's broke down in the stupidest places in the desert, wherever it is, they'll go recover it. I think I've they seen do it. awesome I've seen recovery it, yeah. videos. They do those barn finds, don't they? Yeah, they do loads and just, of loads yeah, of cool yeah, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and sick. like I think that's so interesting. There's nothing like that in England. I don't know if it's because it's really hard to get a car stuck or yeah, what. But, <laughs> knows. but it's just I, I'm obsessed with watching stuff like that at the moment. These cars, but it's just. I've clutched that like, from the YouTube thing. It's people are more invested in the process. It's so, like when you see something start like that and then you see the end goal, that's when your crowd are like, or the following are like, whoa, that's sick. Like I see it, like if I sit there and like, um, uh, one of my mates, Matt Armstrong, he picks up a shedded car that's been absolutely totaled. Next minute you know, he's literally... You look at it, it is out on the road racing it and it's fresh and it's minty. You sit there thinking, how was that even possible? But that's why people are invested in it. And his channel is also going to go sky high. Next one minute, I can see it just going crazy because you can't get enough of it. Yeah. So it's just like you said, you see those barn fires, you see it started like that and the next minute it's done. That's the process. I watched some. I watched some videos. They're not like two hours long, right? I watched them on like double X speed. This guy called Andrew Camacho. He's not. He's just fixing stuff. He's not even. Um, he's not even talking. All he does is just fix stuff. Like he'll get something. It will have like, and he'll just be like, okay, when I, I'm gonna get this JCB, it doesn't work. I'm gonna go into the jungle, wherever it is. I'm gonna try and fix it. I'm gonna drive it off. I'm gonna bring it back, and then I'm gonna change the tracks and stuff. Two hour video. It's got like twenty million views. Crazy. And he's not even talking. The that's their. That, not just that's shit videos, but they're so interesting. <laughs> They are, they're just, they're just show it. But that's just like, can you think like, even that type of video now, that's TikTok now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That video, if that was sped up now and it was in a, in a, in a TikTok, that's what people want to see. People's attention span ain't the same as what it used to be. Like you can sit there and watch that. Now people just watch it. I swipe up on my TikTok and next bit I'm watching stuff that I shouldn't be watching, but I'm watching it because it's so interesting. <laughs> so it's just like, it, it's, it's crazy, man. The, the game changes every single time, but it's just, adapting with it isn't it well how important is tiktok to you now to, to, to oh, your I brand struggle, i struggle with tiktok i struggle with tiktok but it's uh but it is really important because the people it's funny because people always send me like videos on tiktok i'm like what's this like but no one do you know like before i'd be like on okay your facebook or your instagram but it's on tiktok people are putting stuff on tiktok i'm like this is to me i sit sort of as a child's platform but it actually isn't like it actually has got it's so powerful and like it's so creative and you've got to have time like you cannot anyone can read the instagram picture i think that's why i liked it because it was already instagram picture or, or a video but then a tiktok you've got to then be creative you've got to do a mini youtube video and make it work with a trending sound yeah with this there's a lot of variables that you've got to add to the table it's actually but it's really important tiktok i mean i know that my missus she's got a sweet business called cold candy literally her tiktok videos what's the what is it when it's just therapeutic where like just pouring stuff in and stuff oh, like right, that. okay there's a word or whatever it's called and whatnot and you watch it and you're just like her views millions and millions and millions i struggled to do it but i've only started to get to gist of it now of the concept of it but before i just didn't get my head around it. i was like oh, forget it let me just stay on instagram but yeah it's 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 a serious Tik weapon. tiktok are absolutely flatlining people like you know, did you see the Netflix drop the other day? It was like thirty eight percent down or thirty percent down, something stupid like that, right? Because uh, their subscriber growth has, has dramatically slowed down. People think it's just because they increased the price of, of Netflix by a pound, no. but that was, that's not the case. If you no. look at if you look at TikTok, they're taking everyone's time. It, you could Everybody. you could if, if you're you know Facebook, whatever you are, Facebook on Instagram, yeah, um, TikTok. 
you're competing for people's time. Netflix, they're competing for people's time. And what's it. everyone doing? Everyone's not sat there watching TikTok. No, sorry, uh, Netflix. They're sat there watching TikTok. TikTok. That's the problem. And that's the problem with that, like, over the last, like, six months I've been watching with YouTube. That's why sometimes I sit back when, like, I know the content that I'm putting out is consistently the same stuff. But then when it's dramatically 50% less, I'm like, hold on a minute, what's going on here? And I'll sit back and watch yeah. for a bit. But it is, like you said, TikTok is taking over. People don't have the span to be there. They're just swiping up, swipe, 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 swipe. But look at Instagram where they've put, re they're, they're really focused on re reels. Reels, yeah, like reels YouTube going shorts. crazy, yeah. yeah. That's what, so they're all trying to dip into it, but it's kind of like TikTok is there, isn't it? TikTok's always the one, and reels do go well. So if you do upload the video, it has to be a, a reel. Yeah, well, just, no yeah, point. yeah, yeah, exactly. So just drop your reel and then put it on TikTok and just yeah, do both yeah. at the same Literally. time. It's pretty simple, but the, yeah. the, the, the difference in obviously how many people it's reaching is just dramatically crazy. different absolutely crazy so it's re it's a really good thing what about learning business and finance at school did you learn any of that Ooh, or was it all from your family i wish i did do business studies at school i think i would have enjoyed okay, it okay well let me tell you i did business studies at did school you? and they don't teach you anything you need to know about actual real, the real life world business. Oh, no way. nothing at all nothing i wish that they just took you know you leave school okay so what type of career you want oh you've got time you've got 10 years you don't you have to rush into a career just try loads of different things yeah. okay well now i need to budget how much i want to spend per month you know so oh, i've got 100 pound and i need to split it between x y z my phone bill is going to be 50 i need x amount of money for food like just simple stuff just planning your life yeah don't teach anything just all bollock stuff that you're going to need when you're up here if you ever get up here do you know what i'm saying <laughs> It's mad. You miss the core foundations, and it <laughs> all That's the time. The I, I, I've always wondered that. As I sat there thinking, all of my mates did business studies. I didn't do it. I just did like music and art. What the fuck do I do art for? <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Learn how to graffiti. That's about it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, yeah, it's true. I always thought that. But then it's it's like you said. I think like I learned from my mistakes and being in the real world. Like, okay, you can't do that. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I think when you have to do it, then you you have to learn it. The way to do it instead of someone telling you something you take it in but will you actually like you said will you reach that point i don't know have you well how have you juggled your, your businesses your youtube channel and being a parent because you've got two kids you say no? yeah i think i think that's been the hardest struggle so it's just like the businesses is 20 i'd say all of my businesses is 24 hours a day like literally I don't switch off. This like, guy has got a walkie-talkie yeah, that he connects to people with yeah, he's so got like, a radio uh, it's true because you say that like I'm, because I've got ADHD, and I need to organize myself. So it's just a simple thing where I've got all of my staff. So like, I've got 30 staff, they all have a radio. They're expensive, but I can contact them at any time and know what's going on. I mean, we all know I've got two free phones. WhatsApp is lit a myth. How many WhatsApp groups are you in? Um, everyone knows they're probably in about 50 WhatsApp groups. Are you really watching it? Whereas that's straight to the point. Anyone that's important in there, that I can get to them straight away, anywhere in the world. I mean, that's how I'm traveling. So if I've got a DJ set in Dubai, I can travel to Dubai and still keep in contact with them. Do, do they have to have a walkie-talkie as well? Or could you ring me if you wanted no, to? No, no, I can put it on an app, but they, got, they've all got a walkie-talkie though. They've all oh, got right, a radio, okay. so each and everyone, and I can- So you couldn't them. ring me off that? If I had the app, nah, nah, nah. If I had, if, if you had the app, yeah, I could. Oh, okay. Yeah, I could. So, but right, right. we've all got the handset because then the handsets, yeah, it's it defeats the objective. Good. It's on the phone because yeah. you can get an app anyway. But then I can speak to my specific staff member at any time, or we can speak to each other as a group. If something's going on, I'm in the loop. So if these, like, if I if I tune in, and every business has got its own channel. So, like for example, my management channel that's just management who are with me are sorting out just DMO stuff. Then obviously, like for example, if we're doing the DMAX stuff, okay, we've got a DMAX channel. We can hear what's there talking. I can tune in and, and know what's going on on everything 24-7. So it's just the organization is is uh, is the key to it. And then obviously sleepless nights as well. Because I, I will literally, if I'm ready to sleep, I will sleep. If I'm with, I've got a full-time driver because that's what I kind of learned that I can't be on the road because every hour in the day is crucial i can't be traveling from like see from east london to west london now that's two hour, two and a half hours if i'm in the car how am i meant to be on my phone at the same time yeah. sorting out another situation so it's it, it is a struggle but then i kind of like put in the effort to then realize that i need teams so my team can manage each project what's going on and then i can just oversee so the point where i can wake up in the day and, and, and i can actually lie in my bed with my phones and conduct what my teams are doing at all times so that's the only way i get to do it so like i try and stay at home as long as possible till i physically need to go out x y to have a meeting or to go film or to go to one of my businesses to sort business out and then that's the way i kind of juggle it so i don't know where i'm going every single day until 
I've got an appointment. So I try and stay at home as poss- as long as possible. In the night time, I get the most amount of stuff done because everyone's sleeping. I can not get everything set up. So when it turns eight o'clock in the morning, because obviously the kids, you know what kids like. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm up from four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So four o'clock in the morning, I'm up. So four or five, I'm doing daddy daycare. <laughs> Six o'clock, I'm, I'm on the grafters. Yeah. I'm on the phone sorting my stuff out. So um, yeah, it's it's juggling it. I think it is a it's a juggle. Like I can never say where. Luckily, obviously, I got a supportive missus as well. So like, she also works for herself and stuff and whatnot. She and she can kind of like, she knows that my stuff is spontaneous as well. So, and she's obviously obviously she's a new business owner as well. She's set up her own team in terms of her her shop that she runs. And if you helped, so she, you've helped her with that. Yeah, 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 with stuff like that. Yeah, so. Literally, it's it's kind of like we're in a, an easy position at the moment. But like a, the the main thing is the team. As long as you have got a serious team around you, and valuable people that can you can rely on, then that it makes things a lot more smoother than. Trying well, to what advice stuff. would you give someone that wants to start a business? Because you don't most people don't even know how to actually start a business. Obviously, companies how you can do it yourself for like twenty five pounds yeah, or something. It's actually, it's so and, simple. And people will go to an account and get charged like a grand. Yeah, it's true. It's it is so simple. You just go online, like I said, set up a company, and then. What, obviously make sure the company is viable what yeah. you're going to even do in the first place like don't just set up those companies for no reason but like I kind of ran with the idea and then the idea was working I was like okay cool I need to start getting my stuff in order, in order now so let me get an accountant let me set the company up let me get the accounts and then start doing stuff properly but it is very simple to do it's very simple and anything can be a business these days it just needs to be done in the proper way yeah. So. What about um? Well, what motivates you then now? Because you know you're still me. clearly very, very, very motivated. Do you know what I it motivates me? People like when I see people like you that are like around a similar age, if not you're, you're, you're twenty nine now. You're so younger than me. Younger. I'm thirty three, and then I see that look how much they've achieved in that short time. And I like people that have done it less time than me and better because that you, you that's my example of look that shit fucking works. Like, have you seen the level of that? That motivates me. Okay, I need to get my game on. So, okay, cool, boom. I'm onto something else now. Because when you see people, I don't, some people will hate and think, oh, yeah, they've done that because blah, 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 or this, that, the other words. I'm thinking, okay, how have they done that? That's sick. I want to know how they've done it and how can I implement that into my life to make, to better me as a person. If you're not taking things in, like, I'll see, like, most people, like, even other YouTubers, other people would not even try and do collaborations together because they're scared of somebody taking the light. Whereas I'm trying to put as many people on and take as much stuff in because I remember when I was first learning how to DJ and, and nobody tried to help me to try and get into a club. I just had to finesse that myself. If I ain't doing that or if I've now got a platform and there's someone that can I can put on, then I'm going to do it because... I feel like that's gonna make me as a better bet. That's gonna better me as a person, and also I know that I have nothing to fear because I've got the drive to make to get to wherever I need to be, regardless. Whether if someone's ten ten steps ahead, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. As a some, I could look at say like your project and what you've done in your career in your life, and and hate on it because you're younger than me. You've done it in less time. You've got way more money than I've, I'll ever see. Do you know what I'm saying? And I could sit there and hate. Oh, do you know? Yeah. <laughs> But I sit there and I'm like, yo, I need to know what's going on. I need to, I need to up my shit. If you haven't got that mind- mentality, then you're gonna fail. It's as simple as that. You've got to be motivated. You've got to be inspired, and you've got to be literally driven. And you cannot give up because that's the main thing. I don't give up. I'm persistent. I'm like a. Pest. People would love to see you give up as well. That's and that's what drives me because when shit flops, like. Another one of my sayings, I've got two sayings, let's talk more action and L's to W's. Any L that I have, I flip it into a W by all means. If something goes wrong, okay, I've had the press sit there and write two spreads of, on the Sunday Times about a little meet that I've done in whatever and cause whatever. Okay, I'm going to make that into a positive. So then off the back of that, I've been doing a legal car meet. So now I've got DMAX, which is actually a legal meet. And we've done like, well, over half a million pounds worth of sales and whatnot. Do you know what I'm saying? In under a year, off an idea, which was from me falling out with somebody else who didn't want to have me at their event. So I've gone from somebody saying to me, oh, you're not allowed to come to this event called VMAX 200. So I said, yeah, fuck you. I'm now going to create DMAX 250. I'll turn the V into a D <laughs> and I'll add 50 on top of it. And I'm going to take your business, you prick. Yeah, that's what yeah, I'm on. Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's my vibe. Like, okay, if you're going to do that, watch what I'm going to do. So I kind of, that kind of gives me the stimulus. I'm a bit yeah, of a weirdo. <laughs> like no, that, like... That. I'll take your business. <laughs> Do you know who else is like that? Reese Mubara. 
Is he? That's what he's like. He's like, fuck you to everyone. Anyone that, yeah, hate, man, any, that, anyone that, that hates on me, anyone yeah. that... Was, that's power to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not like that. Fuel, but to him, that's fuel. Yeah. Same with you, that's fuel. fuel so I don't I'm even take, no, not, didn't, I don't care if someone hates on it, it don't change me. Yeah. Whereas like, he loves that. Like you hate on him, that's fuel. Like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? That I only see. makes him more money. So like, yeah, yeah, sometimes people like. will take him the wrong way, but he'll rub people up the wrong way on purpose because he wants to get people the energy, to hate. And it, he wants the energy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. why some people online, like he might come across a bit, Weird, but he's he like in real life. He's a, just a normal guy, but like yeah, that's yeah, what he, he needs. He that needs energy. the fuel. That's what I'm like. I'm. I'm not. He seems more extreme than me, but like I'm. I'm like that. Like you tell me, I can't do something. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna show you. That I'm gonna do it. Yeah. Like that's that's it. And then yeah, all of you doubters that sit. I sit here and people say because I don't tell people on my businesses. Like because I'll be straight. Half of the people that go to my businesses don't even like DMO, mm. so it's good. You don't need to know that's going into my pocket. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, that's and uh, that gives me a thrill. Yeah. Like I'll sit there and it's, and I'll I'll literally lock into my cameras and I can hear customers talking shit about me. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, like I'm taking your money to like who's the smart motherfucker now? Yeah. <laughs> so that's just uh, um it's the drive. Like you said, like you've got to be passionate and you just can't. You just got to be deliberate, man. Like literally. And consistent, but the the drive of of people telling you you can't do something is it's amazing. just the idea as well. Like the difference, let's say between me and you, is just some of the ideas we've had. They've just been differently. Than my, some of my stuffs just clearly by accident b- yeah. been bigger. That's it. Our, our drive and our our work ethic has been exactly the same. That's what's crazy. Like that people want to know the difference between a billionaire, a millionaire, and whatever. It's just the, the level of idea, the drive, the work ethic, still it's the crazy, same. It change. You know what I mean? Sometimes people just get lucky with the idea they've picked. Yeah, and that's that's it. Yeah, but then again, still, you've got to make it happen. Though, oh, you've always time. got to make it happen. That's what I'm saying. But all if all means. things out, I, 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 our work ethic's the same. Do you know what yeah, I'm saying? That's you put, it, that's some people, you might even work more than me. Yeah, do you know what I mean? True. You but then, like you said, to work is smart and not harder, isn't it? So yeah. when you, you learn those things on the way, isn't it? Of course, yeah, yeah <laughs> of course. What do you think your biggest risk that you've ever taken is? Oh, that's a serious, oh, bro. I don't think I'm gonna answer that because you took a lot. I do, everything I do is a risk. <laughs> yeah, everything. The moment I'm walking out the door is gonna be a risk to me. Like. I'm doing things that I should not be doing. Do you know what I'm saying? Not illegally, but like a normal person would say, tell you, I would stay away from that. But I'm like, what is it? You're talking financially or what? Financially, business, like literally, I I feel like you have to take certain, even like, for example, working for yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Like I, that took me to get to a point where, okay, I've never got a guaranteed income unless I'm working. And then when you go out and then you start having staff, then they become your dependents. So I sit here now thinking, oh shit, we've had a bad month at work. I need to sort my shit out because I'm not going to be able to pay X, Y, and Z. They've got families. That Then you have, do you know? Yeah, then you got white. Yeah. Mm. And then I've, I've got my own kids. I've got my missus. I've got my house that I've got to sort out. I've got my other properties and thousands of vehicles that I've got to sit in there. I need to keep my shit going. Like, otherwise it would just come crumbling faster than anything else. So, I feel like risk is a key word that I always take. Not I'm saying that everyone to take risks at all times, but sometimes you need to take those risks to, to move forward in life. Like I said, like even not even working for an employer, like, do you know what I'm saying? I yeah. can't work for somebody, so I know that I need to work for myself because when I start working for people, I just can't take instructions. Oh, do you think you're un- un- unemployable now? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I think I've always been that because whenever every job that I've had, I've basically been sacked. Right. So like, I just like don't like taking instructions. So, I've learned the hard way that okay. Well, is that because you think you can do it better? I don't know. Just I think at the time I like just give me an example. Like someone would give you what type of instruction? Go deliver this pizza, and you're like, nah, fuck that. <laughs> what? Like for example, even little things. Just put like okay, I'm in for work at nine, but I'll probably like okay. Let me use PC World because that's the last job that I reckon they're proper. Like I used to work at PC World in Kinemit. You know Kinemit. Yeah, yeah. It's work at Kinemit there. Like I was doing a fifteen hours, fifteen hours contracted. Everyone else is doing 40 hours. We get set sales, t- sales targets and whatnot. But my sales targets were the same as a 40-hour um, employee because I was hot on my sales. So we used to have uh, our deliverables that we needed to, 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 to do for the week. But I'd smash them out single-handedly because I was on my game. So I used to come in. My sales and my manager at the store used to be like, okay, we need you to go on fire. Okay, cool. I'd spend two hours banging out sales. After I'd done that, I'd just walk out. Do you know what I'm saying? I've done my yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. I've done my you you need me to sell. I've done that and whatnot. What what more do I need to be doing here? Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm not earning that. Let me go home and learn how to DJ. So do you know what I'm saying? And then 
The other staff would then get pissed off. Oh, he comes in whenever he wants. But the manager at the time didn't give a shit because I was delivering over and beyond what I was contracted to do. So she knew that, yeah, that's my guy. Like, yeah, let him until the point where it went to area manager. And then in the end, like, look, you're paying around. And I just left him my end. I said, yo, I'm going to be a DJ. So that's it kind of thing. So it's just, I don't like taking instructions. Like when I know that, okay, well, I'm very fair. Like I know I'm going to come and do my job, but I'm going to do my job. But then I'm not, I'm not going to sit around doing nothing. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'd rather not be paid and then focus my energy onto something else, which I'm then going to move forward with. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, that's why you should just do. So, so let, let's talk about this new project which you've got then, because you've got this. I saw you post about. Ah, uh, yeah, day, the uh, D Max HQ. Yeah, which seems quite big. Yeah. So basically, we started the D Max project last year. Quick thing, like, like I said, uh, with uh, I, had, I fell out of another brand. I mean, and then literally I said, okay, I'm gonna do it with my ass. So we launched it like New Year's Eve last year, like as a round off a YouTube video, and it went viral. We said when we hit ten thousand followers, we will launch our first event. We launched the uh, the video, and in 24 hours, we had like 30,000 followers literally just come through. So we was like, oh, fuck, we need to launch an event then because we've kind of said that we're going to do it. We thought we was going to get in a few months, gives us some time. So anyway, we've launched the event, sold out our first tour, which is like London to Barcelona, um, in 12 hours. Like that's 150 supercars. In, oh, so they're all going to drive with you to Barcelona? Yeah, to Barcelona, 150 supercars paying two and a half grand a piece. So we sold that out, but obviously during this time, Corona is still apparent. It's still locked down. It's still stuff going on. So then we've launched another event. So we've done our first actual event, which is which was at Silverstone. So we was the first people to actually put on an event after lockdown in June, and we had over I think five thousand people there. So like they used our event as kind of like uh, a pilot to see whether they could put on F one during during lockdown. So. And we executed it flawlessly. So it, this whole DMAX brand was going crazy. So then, obviously, the good thing about it is like we had some good highs, we had some good lows because we had to cancel like or postpone some of the tours because we couldn't go to France because they had opened their borders and closed them. So this year, so now we're doing it this year. And then um, literally at the same time, like we then learned that like there's a gap in the market because for us car heads, it's all good that we're all street racing. We all go like to go on car meets because where else we're going to drive. It's not like we can just rock up to Silverstone and just drive our cars on the track. We use the streets. So I've learned from my mistakes that, okay, cool. I've now got X, Y, and Z amount of following that listen to what I say and I can control them. And now I can actually, I've actually got the funds to actually put this project into place and make a legal meet instead of an illegal one because they're complaining about yeah. having 20,000 people in two cities in one day that it could cause the whole emergency services stress. So why don't I do it legally and, and have it there? So then we did that project, but we was using other venues and stuff. And then we found out that still it's hard to get the venues. Now there's a backlog of, of um, events because Corona's happened. So everything that didn't happen in 2020 is now happening in 2021. 2021's happening in 2022. So then I had this concept that like, look, we need to have a place where all petrol heads can go, like a, a shopping mall for petrol heads. I don't like going shopping, but like if it's something to do with cars, motorists, like I ride bikes, I ride quads. We need a one-stop place where we can all go to and we can all chill and it can all be in a safe environment. I can go there with my kids. Maybe there's a go-karting track there, a motocross track there. There's a drag strip at the back for people to do all of these things that people would actually pay to do, but there actually isn't a facility. There's a gap in the market. So that's what I then put. We, we I had the mock-up this time last year, but then it was just, there's so much things going on. And I just thought to myself, okay, cool. Maybe we're going to do this project tonight. Let me throw it up and see what the response is like online. So I threw it up and it just went wild. And everybody just said, this makes sense. Someone needs to do it. And if someone's going to do it, it's going to be you. So then I just felt like now I'm on, I've got a burden. Like, I need to make this happen. So all this week, that's all we've been doing in meetings. How can we make this happen? What do we need to do? Like, this is out of my forte. I've never done all that. Like, you would know, like, buildings okay. and mm. projects, structures and whatnot, way out of my league. So trying to take it in and trying to partner with people that can actually help this project go to where it needs to be and actually execute it. Because it's something where... It's a project that's never happened anywhere in the world, I'd say. Like, it's not happened in America. It's not happened in, U in the UAE. It's not in Australia. Not in UK. Not in Europe. So, like, and obviously my following's worldwide. So, people are here. Like, I'm hearing people like, if this happens, we're flying in. So, in my head, it's like, there's a serious gap in the market that needs to be taken. 
and this needs to be taken serious because it's true this will help a lot of the communities this will give people in in my situation a place to go because even me i don't even uh, i don't drive my car apart from going to work yeah. like there's no place for me to go that is legal that's like without me now being because now they're classed me as an influencer then if i'm there it's my fault do you know what i'm saying would you consider crowdfunding it I don't have a clue about crowdfunding. So obviously crowdfunding, you put your project out and everyone pitches the, uh, X amount of money towards it and you could give them like a, I don't know, maybe like a six months free membership or something there. They can get in free once you've done it all because that's it's going to cost, only because idea. it's going to cost a lot of capital to, to start up. Yeah. And obviously people might be happy to throw a hundred pounds in here and then you've got such a big following. Yeah. You could easily crowdfund, that's you know, a, good, a few hundred a grand point. to put towards it. Just give the people that have put money in, that's you know, a, a free day or something extra. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's actually a good point. Like, I mean, it's very early stages at the moment, yeah, but it's yeah. just like the possibility of the laws around it, what can it be, what is the concept of it? So we just kind of nailed that down this week, literally. We went, I only threw it off like on the weekend last week. Um, but like now it's just like we're getting the concept down and obviously, like you said, looking into avenues, how to fund it and stuff. Obviously, and where it's going to be. Put it's going to be big, right? is, Yeah, the location of it mm. as well. And then obviously scalability, because one thing is it's all good saying, okay, we're going to go here and we're going to plot there. But then what happens when you outgrow it? Because that's another thing that I've experienced, like thinking too small and then getting there and yeah. you're over outgrowing it in, in a month's time. Then you then you you create complications with councils. Yeah. There's too many people there. Then there's trouble going on and stuff like that. So yeah, it's planning, a, a lot to take a lot to take in, in in this kind of thing. So yeah, man. But it's um, but yeah. I love it. You're just throwing stuff out there that you've never tried before. You've never done before. And just and dive ex- straight in. Yeah, you're exploring different things. Yeah, that's it. But it's just just like if no one's done it, then you can at least try it. At least I know that I've tried doing something. And then like try and it's not for. I'd say it's not even for me. It's for the whole scene that I represent. Like I want. People like me that are a bit scatty and whatnot and have, and love going to these little meets, but to actually have a place where they can go, enjoy it, it's safe. Or and you could even, I'm thinking, just thinking out loud, you could even do like some type of test, you know, rent some type of track somewhere, but somewhere where it's got a field, you can start building mud jumps and that's so people can do that and then just get loads of food trucks to get them all there. So you can just do one type of event and just test it. Yeah, we've, but we've actually done that last year. So oh, okay. it's like so we've, we've actually, we know that there's a pool and I think that our biggest downfall that we had doing the events was too many people come in there. Like really? Our event that we had in August, like we turned the golf course into like a whole kind of petronet bean park, but then we did everything. We made bridges. We did whatever we need to do, but think about the traffic that came from Milton Keynes all the way down to M25. <laughs> like the MotoGP was on at the same time. They said that we brought in more people than the MotoGP <laughs> and that weekend. So it's because when you think about it, going to a football match, everyone's walking. Going to a car meet, okay, you might be four of us in here, but we're all in four cars. Yeah. We're not one person in what, uh, four people in one car, so it's a lot of variables to take in. Well, and Maybe petrol heads just love to meet them. Love heads. to meet, and it's it's good though because I've met so many people through being a petrol head, and then like you would meet severe business owners, millionaires, like li- millionaires, literally people that don't have no money, which I can relate to as well because I've been there with every penny chucked into this pride and joy, and we're just passionate about one thing, and that's that's it. It's a serious com- common denominator that no matter what business you're in or what you do for a living, everybody wants to drive at least a nice car. Yeah. So that's where I'm just like, this This here is something that I'm really invested in. Ah, good. I'm just, listen, I'm excited to see where it goes. Everything <laughs> you're doing is just it, crazy. I said I've been watching it for a while and you just I keep coming up with it, new man. ideas and everything. And obviously the UK needs someone like you, someone that's high energy, young, yeah, hungry, man. you know what I'm saying, <laughs> in that area. And there's not been that many people do it. It's like you and Yanni, really. That's it. Doing, yeah, doing, yeah, doing the car scene. That's not, it. Not many other people. So now I'm excited. I appreciate you coming on. I appreciate it, man. Nah. Thank you very Good much. Job. Cheers, bro.